Okay, so it's time so we can start the session now. So first and foremost, I would like to really thank all of you, welcome all of you to today's session. The topic of today's session is introduction to affiliate marketing. Those of you who don't know me, my name is Kapil Nakra, I'm one of the co-founders of Digital Vidya. Uh, to lead this session today, we have with us Benedict Hiles. Benedict is a vice president at iProspect Communicate 2. He has more than 11 years of experience in the digital marketing space and in this in, 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 in his experience he has actually consulted big brand names like Citibank, Amex, Travelocity, Expedia, Kingfisher, Tesco. These are some this some of the names. So really want to thank Benedict for, for taking time out and uh, walking us and you know taking time out and having us go through the world of affiliate marketing. Thanks man Ben. Uh, so, uh, regarding today's topic, you know, affiliate marketing. Uh, affiliate marketing to me is an is a way to get direct customers or highly highly relevant leads. The problem is how to do it effectively, such that you achieve the desired scale and you do it profitably. So, in today's session, what we're going to do is that we're going to. It's an introduction to affiliate marketing and we are going to cover all the basics related to affiliate marketing. So we will talk about what is affiliate marketing, what is it in affiliate marketing that is good for any business and how to really do it effectively and in that we will include all the do's and don'ts, what are the various payment models and what are the various ways to build your affiliate programs and various tools and technologies that you can use. So uh, without taking any further time, I would like to hand it over to Ben now. Uh, before I do that, uh, those of you joining us for the first time, uh, this session will go on for one hour duration. By default, all of you are muted. So we will have about the presentation for about 30, 35 minutes. And if you have any question, you can just type it down in the question panel. After 35 minutes, we will have a 25 minutes of a Q&A. And we'll try to address all the questions that you will put up uh, in question panel and in the chronological order. So uh, that's how the session is going to go. Uh, over to you, Ben. Thanks. Thanks, Kapil. Um, and what a wonderful introduction. Um, I hope everyone can hear me clearly. I will try and speak as clearly and concisely as possible so uh, you can understand me. Um, so this is what I wanted to cover uh, for today, uh, what I want you to take away. Some of the things that we're going to look at is obviously what are the basics behind affiliate marketing, uh, how and why is it good for your business, um, how you go about setting up a program, uh, looking at the rules um, that, that you want to govern your affiliates by, uh, looking at the do's and don'ts, so it's simple uh, tips and tricks in that sense, how do I actually find affiliates, uh, how to grow the network so it kind of collectively prospers, and then looking at some of the tools and technologies um, associated with affiliate marketing. So we'll start with the ABCs, the basics. Um, affiliate marketing is a type of performance-based marketing in which a business rewards one or more um, affiliates for each visitor or customer bought by the affiliate's own marketing efforts. Effectively, affiliates are extensions of your uh, marketing team. They're, they are people who are going to drive additional business uh, through to, your, to you and your brand. Okay? Now, um, the key players within the affiliate space uh, are the merchant, which is the brand or the retailer, the network, which is a, a generally a, a middleman between the affiliates and the brand, and often a uh, sort of solution provider in terms of software, uh, the affiliate or the publisher themselves, the guys that are going to run your ads and, and actually drive business in, into your site. Uh, then you've obviously got the unsuspecting customer who, who doesn't know any of what's going on, really, uh, but they're the person that the affiliate's going to attract. Uh, and bring into your brand. Um, then you have the technology. So the technology, so how uh, we're going to track the affiliate performance, manage the creatives, the offers, the outreach, and the, the payment mechanisms. And then finally, you've got the, the likes of us, which would be the agency. So an agency uh, can be brought in to manage all of the above and obviously try and alleviate your headaches. So rather than you guys uh, as the brand um, actually going out there and trying to do this, you, you might take on an agency to, to do it for you. Um, now, this is the, what a merchant would look like, obviously. It would be your flip carts, the HPs of the world. Basically, they're the people who do the sales. Um, the networks, these are some of the bigger players in the, in the Indian space. Um, these guys 
uh, have software solutions, uh, there are ad, uh, the advertising networks, uh, the guys that, that can drive business for you. Um, and then you have the affiliates themselves. Now in, in, in India you quite often get double ups, so the, the, some of the networks actually double up as affiliates within, within, their, own, within their own network. Uh, you get the aggregators who are people who do kind of price comparison and, and generate lead gen for you uh, or business for you. And then you've got the actual publishers where the, the hardcore kind of affiliates are. These guys could be publishers of content, they could be uh, comparison charts, they could be bloggers. Uh, realistically, any publisher with um, Google AdSense plugged into their website is potentially a, 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 an affiliate. So there's someone that's trying to monetize their content uh, and, and generate uh, additional revenues from the content that they have. So, so as one of the routes to market, looking at AdSense owners is, is a very good way of understanding who's trying to monetize their content and potentially give you an opportunity to reach out and, and see if you want to get them to join the program. Um, now the basic workflow uh, of affiliate is your customer comes along, uh, it comes to the affiliate, the affiliate will send the customer to the merchant, the merchant will facilitate some form of action whereby the customer will do something, they will uh, get a lead, give a lead, they will uh, perform a sale or they'll download or, or look at a certain piece of content, um, or whatever the, trans whatever the, the, the trackable um, action that the merchant wants to, to, to achieve, uh, will can be turned into an affiliate sort of uh, into affiliate model. Uh, post the customer doing the, the transaction or the action that the, the merchant requires, uh, the, the merchant will then pay the affiliate for that for that action. And obviously within this cycle, everyone's happy. Uh, the affiliate gets paid, the merchant gets their business, and the customer gets what they were looking for. for. So it's a kind of a nice clean uh, flow as such. Um, the key jargons that you will get associated, they're very common across all digital sort of formats, but some of these are, 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 very, are very much in tune with, with the affiliate space. Uh, so you've got your CPM, which is cost per impressions, uh, CPC, which is cost per click, CPL, cost per lead, uh, CPA, cost per acquisition, cost of acquisition or percentage of your revenue, uh, CPE, cost of email, CPV, CPD, and CP, uh, EPC. Uh, that, again, all kind of metrics that you might want to govern an affiliate program uh, by. The, EPC is very specific to an affiliate sort of uh, thing because it's a kind of concept of earning per click, whereby mm -hmm. an EPC would be the total amount of business I've generated through my affiliate program uh, divided by the number of business, uh, clicks that I've, I've, I've kind of pushed through. So it gives you a kind of a net value per click. And this is an important metric for an affiliate because if they know that their earning, uh, earning per click is, say, 50 rupees, they can spend on a click basis up to... Uh, say 45 or 50 even uh, if they want to not make any money but it's a very clear metric as to how effective um, their, uh, their marketing efforts are. They can see exactly what they're earning per click and they know what, what they need to buy their clicks at to make it, uh, make it a profitable exercise for them. Uh, so it's a very good metric from an affiliate standpoint. Uh, but the standard payment models that you'd, you'd have an affiliate is uh, you've got a pay per anything, so that would be potentially a download, uh, someone uploading a CV, someone buying something, it, it, whereby you, you uh, merchant customizes exactly what the metric is he wants the person to do. So it could be a video view, um, it, anything really, it's just a pay per anything model. Um, this, but the more standard sort of ways of looking at things would be a pay per click model, where you have three kind of concepts here where you have a raw pay-per-click where every single um, click, every single click from any IP is counted uh, and can potentially be counted twice. So you can get multiple clicks from the same IP and you'll get paid for each visitor. Uh, you've got a unique IP pay-per-click where only the uh, clicks from a unique IP will, will get counted. And then you've got a blind where no one's actually paying any attention to you and, and it, uh, it's unknown if the, if the clicks are raw or unique coming through. But that, that's your standard sort of pay-per-click models. Paper sale could be a percentage of the sale uh, or it could be a flat rate so uh, I might pay say 500 rupees per customer required or a graduated model whereby uh, for the first 10 customers I'll pay you 500 rupees for the next 10 customers I'll pay you 600 rupees for the next 10 I'll give you 700 so based upon the volume you dictate the value that you're going to pay out to, to the affiliates. Uh, pay per visit is that basically you're paying uh, for someone to come and look at something um, then you've got kind of combinations of all of the above and then the final one is, is a sort of second tier or multi-tier sort of payment structure whereby um, I as an affiliate uh, refer other affiliates to come in and join your pro uh, program and I get paid for the sales that I generate but the affiliates that 
um, I refer, when they make sales, I also get paid a percentage of the sales that they make. So it kind of creates a pyramid scheme as such, which incentivizes your affiliates to go out and do marketing for you to get more affiliates in. Uh, and, and they can actually start earning additional revenues based upon those other affiliates kind of joining the program. So it's a, it's a bit more advanced down the line, but it's a, it, it allows for scalability and getting more and more affiliates into, into practice. Um, so India as it stands at the moment um, does, uh, it's kind of a fairly new thing, but it's, it's rapidly growing um, and more and more businesses are taking it on and taking it more seriously. Some of your e-tail uh, e-tail retail kind of guys, the e-commerce guys like the flip carts of the world already have very good established affiliate programs. Um, but uh, primarily we're, we're finding as an agency especially that most of the affiliates are, are taking the form of a lead generation program where you're paying per lead. Uh, and a lot of the networks that operate will give you paper lead performance sort of models where you simply buy leads at a certain price. Um, where, where obviously I come from, from the, from the UK, the market's a lot more mature, um, for, especially from an e-commerce standpoint, that, that uh, the people out there, they're much more uh, inclined to pay directly for products and services uh, online through their credit card. And as such, most of the affiliate programs, 80% plus of the affiliate programs, will be tracked directly on, on resulting sales and business coming through to, to the brand. Um, and things like CPM, CBC, and lead-based models are actually becoming more obsolete. Because if you think of it from the brand's perspective, you'd rather get guaranteed business and pay for that than pay for, for just site visits and, and, and leads coming through. So it's a little bit more evolved in that sense. Um, but in terms of why you'd want to do affiliate marketing, well, obviously it creates a, a brilliant channel for your sales. Uh, it's driven specifically by, by ROI. Um, so you, you, you say that I'm willing to pay 5% of any sales that you give me. You know exactly that you're only paying out 5% and you know you're generating sales off the back of it. So it immediately gives you ROI from that stage. Um, if managed properly, it can give you huge scale. Um, you get a lot of branding off the back of it because all of a sudden you're opening up uh, advertising channels and websites and content where your brand will be out there where you weren't opening up those before. Um, and, and then you've got, you, that also leads to a lot more reach and it obviously creates this huge opportunity that you, you can potentially tap into. But it's all subject to you getting the right mix for, for setting up the program itself. So creating the actual program, um, I've kind of created here a workflow of what the key steps are actually launch the program. What I'll do, I'll just quickly kind of jump through these steps, but I want to go into a little bit more depth of, of each of them as, uh, later on through the presentation. So, so that we'll be quite quick through this little piece. But basically, first of all, you want to um, work out exactly what you want to sell. Second of all, you need to set up your tracking and reporting solution. Then you need to test, validate, and ensure that that's actually tracking properly. Um, you then configure daily disposition reporting. It's very important from an affiliate's perspective that they know exactly uh, how effective their traffic's been uh, and that they can see the direct response of their traffic. So they can see sales coming through on a daily basis and they can see what they have done to, to create those sales. If you cannot give that visibility to the affiliate, it makes it very difficult for the affiliate to optimize their campaigns. Um, you then, obviously, once you've got that network process set up, uh, you need to then decide on what you're going to pay the affiliate uh, and how you're going to pay them. You need to then define a brand and affiliate guideline Create a go-to-market strategy, so how are you going to launch the program? Um, build creative off the back of that strategy. Uh, and then once you've got that whole mix piece put together, you then start empaneling the affiliates themselves. And to empanel the affiliates, you've got to think about um, the legalities of it, the taxations, the payment mechanisms, uh, who they are, where they're going to be posting, and, and really kind of across all the T's and dot the I's, so to speak. Um, and then once you've got the affiliates on board, we give them unique uh, IDs um, so they can be tracked. Uh, we then get them to publish and then we, we go live. Uh, post them going live, uh, we want to take monthly stock of what sales are generating. We need to make sure that well, the sales that we're generating can get validated so we can pay out to those affiliates. Um, and then post the validations, we then set in, uh, in cycle a payment cycle where between 30 to 60 days after the month end, we are paying out to the affiliate. The reality is that the quicker you pay out to the affiliate, the more likelihood it is that they recycle the money that you pay them back into the program to do more advertising because they can see the benefits. If you take long to pay out an affiliate, each month that you leave it, you're, you're leaving them to go uh, 60, 90, 100 days into the red while they're paying for advertising to generate business for you and they're not able to recoup that 
that, that business. So they, they might just simply die out by the fact that they're not being able to pay back and pay off the advertising costs that they've already incurred. So it's important that you have very slick payment mechanisms that allow the affiliates to reinvest whatever monies they're generating back into the program. The faster you can pay them, the better. Um, so pay on time and never default. If you default on an affiliate, say goodbye to the program, say goodbye to the affiliates. They talk and they will, they will name and shame you as a brand in the, in, uh, very publicly if you don't, um, if you don't pay and, and you, you act funny with them. So it's important that you maintain that relate relationship. Um, and then once you've actually got the program up and running and it's, 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 it's starting to generate business, it's a case of testing, learning, and refining your creatives, how you market to the affiliates, how you, how you create your offers, and how you do your pricing structures to see how you can really benefit from, from the program. And obviously, uh, you want to just keep building to generate sustainable ROI. So that's your sort of flow of the whole, whole process. Just want to now look into a bit more depth into the different sort of mechanisms that we're going to have to go through, right? So that first and foremost, we need to start a tracking solution. Now, to track a program, first and foremost, we need to know what the route to sale is. If your route to sale is uh, primarily converted offline, then a lead-based model might work best for you. If the route to sale can be fully completed online, then a revenue percentage share or a CPA model may be better for you. Um, it is possible, uh, we, we've done this for a number of our clients, it is possible to have offline sales turned to a CPA model or a revenue percentage, uh, but this does require a lot more sophisticated tracking mechanisms, uh, whereby you have very strong call tracking and a very strong CRM system that will allow you to close the loop on the affiliate delivering the initial entry, and, and that being closed off potentially over the telephone or through a, a another party in a shop or, or, or an agent that you, you, you send in to close the sale off, offline. So it, it, it makes it a little more trickier to deal with. But as, as a basic starting point, if you have an offline uh, sale process, then a CPL-based model might, might work best. So there's two main types of tracking systems. There are tracking systems which are referrer-based, and there's tracking systems that are redirect-based. Referrer-based simply means that the URL coming, uh, comes directly into your site. So from the affiliate site uh, to your site, it's a direct URL. But appended to the end of the URL would be a unique identifier identifying that affiliate. The, the other version is that you have a, uh, the affiliate will send a link to a tracking server. The tracking server will register that affiliate and then send the, uh, the, the resulting click into the relevant page on your website. Uh, and then it's the tracking server that will have the information and do all the tracking of the sales as, as you go. The referrer-based mechanism requires you to have the tracking system integrated into your website because the redirect-based system allows a third-party platform to actually manage um, the, the uh, fulfillment of the sales. But principally, they do exactly the same thing. Um, so it kind of follows in this, sort of, in this sort of way. So the customer, they come to the affiliate website. Um, they will then click on the add unit. Um, once they've clicked on the add unit, they will be redirected to the server or your website and a cookie would be dropped. Um, at that point in time, the cookie being dropped, they then land on the, the, the destination page. Post landing on the destination page, they then um, buy, hopefully, and when, when they purchase, the thank you page of the merchant site or the brand site will send a message back to the tracking system to say, hey, a sale has occurred, and that uh, sale then gets mapped back to the original cookie drop uh, to say, okay, this was the affiliate that sent in, sent in the, the piece of uh, the business, and therefore the sale needs to be appended to it. Post that, and post that sale getting validated, the merchant then obviously pays the affiliate. So that's, that's the whole kind of cycle as it, as it, as it pans out. Okay? Um, now, the crux of tracking revolves around two uh, things. The primary, primary one is the unique identifier for the affiliate. So every affiliate has an absolute unique identifier. If that identifying parameter is not there when the, when the affiliate sends in the business, uh, then, then the affiliate cannot be paid. So we cannot map it back to, to them as the referrer. Um, the, also the time of the delivery becomes very important. Um, because what, what you'll find is if you take on multiple uh, programs, multiple networks, uh, you have multiple affiliates, if they all start sending you in traffic, uh, you might find scenarios whereby um, affiliate A sends you a visitor, and then affiliate B sends you a visitor, and then affiliate C sends you a visitor, and it's affiliate C that generates the sale. Now, the system, if it's not configured properly, will pay out 
to only uh, to potentially to all three of those those affiliates because they've all uh, bought in that customer. So what you need to do is map a timing metric into that to say, okay, were you the last click or the first click or within a certain a certain period of time to then determine who do you pay for a particular visitor. Um, so the timings are very important, and that's based upon the kind of cookie drops that's going to happen. So there's various mechanisms that you might want to track by to try and uh, negate double payments uh, and, and ensure that you're, you're deduping and, and, and only paying one person for, for one sale. So what we have is these kind of four mold models that kind of get built in. Uh, the, the first one is would it be a first click model, so the affiliate that delivered the first visitor will get the, within a given time frame, will get the, will get the uh, sale. You then have a last click model, which is basically the person who delivered the last click in within a given time frame, so the one that actually generated the result in sale. Or you can have a hybrid, which actually splits the overall payout across multiple entry points to say, okay, I'm willing to pay 500 rupees out for a customer, and five people have delivered me the same customer within a time frame, I'll pay 100 rupees to each. But then you need quite a clever system that's able to, uh, to work that out and, and map that back. So that's a much more complicated system to sort of put in play. The most basic ones would be your first click or last click attribution. Um, again, and then a more, more complicated system again, is the concept that you're paying out uh, to the first or last click uh, that referred the affiliate uh, and that generated uh, generated the sale, but you're also paying out to not only an affiliate, but you're also paying out to the uh, uh, the, the affiliate, the, uh, the, the affiliate, and the, the affiliate that, that have referred that affiliate into the program. So the, the, you have to pay out at, at two at two points along along the way. Um, so the most common cookie drops, uh, the most common one is, is the thirty day cookie drop. So basically, if I deliver a visitor in, uh, and then on the twenty ninth, uh, on the first day I deliver the visitor, and then on the twenty ninth day the, the, the visitor decides to convert but I didn't deliver that visitor in the second time, um, I will actually get the value for that sale attributed to me because I was the person to deliver the visitor within that 30-day period. A 60-day period is exactly the same thing but a longer breadth of time, and this can ultimately incentivize affiliates to deliver a lot more traffic because they're going to have, once they start cookie dropping, they're going to have a much wider net um, to actually start getting paid and, and business of. And then the widest of nets would be a kind of lifetime cookie where you must realize here that if I deliver someone in, whenever that customer keeps coming back, I keep paying that affiliate because um, it, it, it's a lifetime cookie and it'll always be attributed to me as an affiliate. Um, now that, that from an affiliate perspective is a very sort of golden egg for them because that means they're always going to get paid out for multiple, multiple transactions. But you might not want to do that. The most common sort of mechanism uh, for, for, for a program would be that 30-day standard period. Now, so that's the kind of basics of that of the tracking mechanism. The next thing is, is, the, is the reporting functionality that you need to give to the affiliate. Now, you need to configure a system that gives the affiliate daily real-time reports and daily feedback mechanisms. Feedback mechanisms that either can be accessed via an API or, or live on a reporting dashboard or an Excel download. Um, you also want to be able to give the affiliate uh, real-time sort of content tracking uh, for that affiliate. So they can t uh, test different ad units, they can test different keywords, they have the ability to track the different marketing channels they might be using to promote your products and services. If you can't give the affiliates the, the, these date, data points and this feedback mechanisms to say that they're generating sales and where they got those sales from, it makes it much harder for the affiliate to actually optimize and enhance their campaigns. And if you're limiting the data that, uh, as to what they can do, then, then they might not be able to monetize your program. So with that said, if you, if you imagine this, it's like uh, if I don't know, uh, if I'm an affiliate and I start sending you traffic, and I've spent a thousand rupees delivering you a thousand visitors, uh, and I've sent them from multiple sources, yet I only generate 500 rupees of business. If I don't know where that 500 rupees of business came from, I'm going to lose money on your program um, because I can't work out which source delivered me the value and which source delivered me the 500 rupees. So if I, if you, so the best sort of affiliate programs or systems will allow the affiliate to actually tag up their sources, tag up their traffic supplies, to do that feedback mechanism to then start enhancing their campaigns to improve uh, their efficiencies. And the more they improve their efficiencies and the more money they make, you intrinsically make more money because obviously they're generating you more business. 
So giving them the right ports is very, very critical. Now, network systems or, or network software is a very simple way of doing this. The network will come to you with a system, with a software, which will manage the whole affiliate program, manage the reporting, um, and allow you to just simply plug in. So there's a lot of advantages going to a network in that your network already has the affiliate base, uh, and they already have that reporting functionality and payment system built into that, to that network. The only different disadvantages with a, with a network is that you're going to have to pay for their licensing of their software, and, and potentially you're paying network uh, commissions on all payouts as well. So that so there's um, uh, you you might have to it, it, two ways you can kind of look at this, right? So you can you can say to the network, right, I'm willing to pay five percent, and then the network will go to the affiliates and pay four percent to the affiliate, and maybe pocket one percent for themselves. You as a brand still only pay out five percent, so you might think, okay, that's great. But if you manage the campaign in, in, in house yourself, potentially you could pay the affiliate directly and give them that 5%. And that 5% could potentially mean that uh, affiliate can give you that much more traffic and business off the back of it. Um, the other thing about the networks is you could potentially be limited by their affiliate base. They might not have as wide a reach, you might not be able to plug in new affiliates, uh, and, and you might miss out on a lot of the opportunities that, that, potentially, uh, that you potentially have uh, otherwise not if you're outside of being the net, uh, of a network. So in terms of setting your payouts and your pricing, the, uh, getting the pricing right is really, really important because if you don't get it right, you're not going to excite the affiliates to actually join your program um, and get them to actually start generating business for you. So getting the right incentives in place is critical. Now, um, payments, if you, if, you, if you get this right, in, uh, you can make it, uh, in, like I said, make or, breaks, make or breaks the campaign. Now, the best way of doing this in, invariably is to do a sort of tiered structure where you start rewarding the affiliates that really drive value by paying them more for the business that they're generating. Um, so the affiliate can see that if they're able to scale and able to drive more, they're able to get those bonuses and get that, that, uh, that, uh, those advantages of, of being able to drive that scale. Uh, and then you kind of negate the fact that you're having to pay out so much to everyone. You're, you're only paying really big, big uh, affiliates that the more the more money. And this incentivizes them to actually really grow and, uh, and enhance the, the program. Whatever your payout is, make sure that that payout is an acceptable tolerance and an acceptable cost of acquisition for you. And, and then and then uh, then it's just a case of scaling it from there and, and trying to get it, uh, getting as much as you can. At the end of the day, the more you can pay the affiliate. Uh, for, for the business that they give you, the more business they're going to be able to send to you because the more advertising they're going to be able to do uh, within that, that remit of the money that you're paying out. So here's an example of a kind of a simple sort of payout mechanism. Now, a very good way of going to market is, is well, how do you go to market rather, is at, well, with what sort of kind of uh, uh, payout mechanism, what sort of offers do you give? The best way of doing this and creating a kind of go-to-market strategy is that you sign up for your key competitors' programs. If your competitors don't have any programs, then you're going to, unfortunately you're going to be walking blind in this one. But but if, you, if your competitors do have programs, have a look at what they are offering in terms of payouts, in terms of incentives, in terms of promos, uh, and then assess that and see if you can come in with a sort of killer sort of offer which, which could potentially take their affiliates away from them and bring them into, into your ecosystem. Um, can you create basic payment structures which are more enticing, uh, can you uh, come up with better incentives, better promos, better reporting? Um, and really what you should really be doing is, is use your other marketing channels to assess what is an acceptable cost of acquisition or CPA that you're willing to, to accept from a, from a payout perspective to the affiliate. If it's costing you X from a PPC perspective, if it's costing you say 500 rupees to acquire a customer, uh, from PPC, then that should be the sort of acceptable tolerance levels that you give to the affiliates as, as, a, as, a, as a potential sort of starting point of what you pay them. Um, because at the end of the day, they're going to be going to the internet in the same way as you are as a marketing team, um, trying to find that tracking and trying to find that business. Uh, and if, if, that's, if that's an acceptable threshold for you that you're currently getting through your PPC, then that should be a good number to go back to the affiliates with, because they'll be able to try and, they'll be able to monetize that themselves. Um, if you price too low, uh, you may not make it possible for the affiliate to actually monetize their program, and that's really critical. So, example of payment models. Um, you first of all, you obviously, you've got to understand your path to sale, uh, and then, and then, based upon that, you then you then put in place your 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 payment model. So, I'm going to give you an example here of uh, of a Dr. Batcher scenario. Uh, Dr. Batcher, they do, do do hair care treatments. Now, their process to to, to sale is you have a website visit. 
the lead uh, or appointment is booked online, uh, they then that appointment is then fulfilled at a clinic offline. The clinic will then do a diagnosis in a free trial, and post the free trial, they'd then be a sign up for a treatment. Now, there's two ways in which you could actually look at this. Uh, and the basic scenario is, is that we pay on the lead. And so after the first two uh, actions online, so the person comes to site and drops a lead, you just close it there and you just pay for the lead. But to put further incentive in, you could do something whereby post a 90-day period, the affiliates then receive a further bonus for successful signups. For your lead, so your lead price might be priced at quite a low rate, but post uh, successful signups, you might have a pretty good bumper sort of ma amount that's given to the, the affiliate for, for successful signups. Um, and obviously, you need to be able to track that so that the initial com lead comes in, that initial lead needs to be tracked all the way through to completion with the initial affiliate code that's appended to it so that you can then do that sort of back calculation and pay out those bonuses to the affiliates. But something like this really incentivizes the affiliate to make sure that the quality of their leads are very good because transversely what you can do is you can start putting in reporting to say, okay, if my ratio of signups post the lead for this particular affiliate is very poor, i.e. they keep sending me leads but I'm not getting any business, then we can simply just boot them from the, from the campaign and say, look, I'm not going to pay you anymore, your, your quality is not good enough. But on the other side, if the affiliate's quality is very good, um, we, we pay them and incentivize them further for that quality. Um, the second example of a payment model might be, say, a Hewlett Packard who sell uh, computers online. Uh, there's two potential payment mechanisms. There's a direct buy online and, there's a, uh, and then there's a COD. So what you could do in this scenario is you pay on each and every transaction. A percentage, uh, maybe you'd look at, say, a 3 to 5% of the value of the sale. Um, so if it's a, if it's a 30,000 rupee uh, uh, PC or, or computer, you might pay out a sort of um, 300, uh, three, uh, nine, not 1,000 to 2,000 rupee sort of payout off, off the back of that. Okay? And then from the cash on delivery uh, based computers, so, so obviously you've got the buy online when the transaction happens online, but the cash on delivery, we then pay out those particular sales once that sale's been remunerated uh, and the payment's been made. But again, you, you'd feed these back into the system to make sure the affiliate knows what they're getting from a COD perspective and what they're getting from a buy online perspective, and so they can optimize their, their campaigns accordingly. Um, now, this is really important. Affiliates uh, are as fickle as cats. They always go where the cream is richest. If you are not, if you are not paying out uh, as well as the other guy, and the other guy is selling the same products, the affiliates will just flick over very quickly because at the end of the day, they're looking to where they're going to get the most money and the best payout. Now, there's two sides to this. If your site converts brilliantly well and the, con and the affiliate can see that, then he might be willing to accept a lower payout because he's going to get more sales anyway. But if your site doesn't convert that well and you're giving out lesser payouts for the same uh, than the competitors, then the affiliates are simply going to flip their traffic over to your competitor, uh, competitor parties. So, so making sure that you've got the richest cream in, in the industry is really important to try and, try and keep the affiliates on board and keep them with you. Now, the thing about affiliates is they also like to be looked after, and, and, and not just the sort of the way they're getting remunerated through the program, but in the way you actually treat them as individuals and as people. So a ways to market is you could go in and price yourself in a way where for some products you might decide to loss lead. So let's say for accessory, let's say I'm talking about Hewlett Packard, for my accessories for my Hewlett Packard, for my cables, for my printer cartridges, things like that, you might say to the affiliate, I'll pay you 100% of the sales. Whereas on the computers, I'll pay you sort of two, three percent. Now you use you use the you use the sort of loss leaders as as, as mechanisms of, of driving more sales to the affiliates, and for them to get get better business, because you're knowing that the the, the laptops are going to sustain the overall sort of uh, program itself. And from a marketing perspective, you might use those loss leaders as a mechanism of customer acquisition, pure customer acquisition, so that maybe the customer will come back to you in a second or third or fourth time, and and make that make it a profitable uh, proposition for you, even though your initial sale. It's just it's just your your it's a money in money out sort of scenario, um, but if you do things like that, then you affiliates see the benefits, and they're, they're then kind of uh, they'll be more likely to, to promote your program. But once you've kind of got the affiliate on board, you might then decide to change the program so you're not paying out 100 percent, 30 percent, or 20 percent. You reduce it, um, but you you latch into the affiliate. 
and you make sure make sure you've got the analysis on the inside to understand who is the affiliates that are driving me the most business, who are the ones that are really driving the program, and those guys you kind of wrap up in cotton wool and look after them in means and ways outside of the program. Maybe you take them out for drinks, maybe you buy them dinner, maybe you send them presents, maybe you send them flowers. You, you kind of treat them as individuals and get on a one-to-one -one communication with them so that you're you're you know them on a personal level so that you can keep them and maintain the relationship with them. So, and then you'll be able to kind of to tone down the amounts you pay them and, and, and you're, you're subsidizing that by giving them other offers and other incentives outside of the, outside of the program. So it's very important before you start any affiliate program that you're very clear on your brand and you're very clear on the affiliate guidelines. Affiliates are very cunning they will do absolutely anything to start getting business in. Now, on one hand, you might think, great, but on the other hand, they can do some very sort of dirty stuff in order to get you business, which you might not want your brand associated with, and you might not want to put yourself in that position where you, your, your brand could get a bad name from it. So the things that affiliates might be doing, right? So at the very starting point, uh, the first thing they might do is start doing SEM and start buying your brand keywords. That would inflate your own SEM campaigns, it will inflate your own costs, and actually they'll just be damaging you in that you'll be spending double the amount to Google to pay for your brand keywords. And all they're actually doing is sniping uh, your brand traffic, which, is, which effectively is, is, is a customer that's already converted to your brand. So you might want to stipulate as a starting point that please, I don't mind you using SEM, but please do not bid on my brand because um, otherwise you're going to end up competing. Likewise, you might not want them competing from an SEO standpoint if they're very good at SEO and they start competing and knocking your SEO rankings down because they're doing a better job than you, you might take issue with that as well. Okay? Um, it's very important that you assess the websites that they propose to publish. So it, you obviously don't want to be published on a porn site or, or sort of child labor or something like that. You don't want to have your brand associated with something that really you don't want to be associated with. So that's important you maintain that. Uh, the types of language that you use, the associations that they might use with other brands, uh, whether or not you want ex uh, exclusivity of your ad units uh, on those pages. Um, making sure that they're not mis-selling or, or, or they're adhering to compliance, so they're not set, uh, selling stories which are not true about the brand, and making sure, when, from an email perspective, what they can and can't do. Are they allowed to email? And if they are allowed to email, what is the sort of uh, techniques that they're using? Are they spamming people to death, uh, or, or are they using kind of rational, sensible ways? At the end of the day, you need to maintain and control what the affiliates are doing, because they, if, if you don't, they will go off like cowboys and start spreading, spreading your brand and, uh, and associating your brand with things you probably don't want your brand to be associated with. So it's important you keep an eye on that. So when you're empaneling them, make sure you have a very clear terms and conditions that the affiliate is aware of and agrees to. Uh, this could be a web-based form, but basically all of, the, all of the things that we talked about in the previous slide, so from our brand affiliate guidelines, you've created that as a guideline, you've written that into a T's and C's, and then you've got the affiliate to confirm that they're going to operate to that. Um, as well as that, you'd want to get following. You need to obviously get their name, address, contact number, emails, you need to get the websites they plan to use, payment details, tax details. Uh, make sure you and your affiliate are aware of all the tax implications as well. So make sure that everything's above board. You don't want to get any nasty surprises down the line. So you need to empanel them properly and bring them into the system. Make sure the payments are all fluid and that the, the taxation systems involved with that are all, are all uh, accounted for. Okay. So that's the sort of um, the setting up, the tracking, the empowerment. Next thing is kind of moving on to the sort of creative side of things. Okay. Now the more creative you can give them, the more offers you can give them, the, uh, the better. From an offer standpoint, if you can give the affiliates things that no other channel has, uh, and you can give them offers that they can run with that no other channel has, that makes a huge difference to, to the, the way they're going to operate. So let's say I, I look at say a Hewlett Packard example, perhaps Hewlett Packard might sell a computer at the same price as Flipkart sells the computer, but with, Hewlett, with, the, with the affiliate offer, they sell that computer plus a printer as a bolt-on. So they get the printer as a freebie within the package. So at a cost-cost point uh, from the consumer's perspective, it's the same price, but they're getting, a, they're getting more add-ons. They're getting free printer cartridges or they're getting free cables. They're getting something else put into the mix. If you can give affiliates that sort of uh, leverage, it helps them to sell because then they have something they can go to market which is above and beyond what the rest of the market might have. 
Obviously, there's a caveat to this. You don't want to uh, upset your distributors and other partners that might be in play. But you do have to think, if you're, I really want to drive the program, I've got to give the affiliates something that they can go to market with and actually really drive the program, program forward. Um, so give affiliates that, uh, ads that will sell, so things like coupon codes, money off, bundles, referrals, anything of those sorts where you, you can give them an added sort of value where they can really drive that, that, that product through. Um, every product that you wish to sell will need a creative unit. So if you're a flip card of this world and you've got a million products, you'll need to do something in a way where those products can be dynamically generated or created and the creative can be done in a dynamic format so that the, again, SKU code, so that then the affiliate can go to, go to market with the armory of every single product in, in, your, in your base. If, if that's too complicated, then start with hero products. Start by looking at which products do I need to move, shift, which ones are going to sell well for me, create your bundles around those, and then start promoting them. But at the end of the day, any product you want sold will need to have a creative unit uh, put, put around it. In terms of creative units, these guys will be running AdSense, they'll be running other affiliate programs. Now, if any of you have done any kind of display-based advertising online, there are standard ad unit formats that are kind of pretty uh, universal across um, all the different networks and all the different ad networks. Um, and if, so in, in that sense, if you're going to do an affiliate program, it's best to try and give the affiliates as many types of ad units as they can, so they can fit these ad units into their working websites and into, into whatever it is they have. Uh, because if you don't have the ad unit for them to fit into their site, then they're not going to run your ad unit. So the more you can give them, the better. So, so from, a, from a brand point perspective, it, uh, from, from a management perspective, it, you, you've, you've got to think there does need to be a creative element and a creative team put behind an affiliate program who can actually generate these creators and get them put into play. If you can do things which are how give dynamic solutions, where the ad creative might be housed by a software solution, um, and for the ad unit to be called, will get called by the ad server, and when it gets called, it gets called with um, a product SKU, so the ad unit might be fired and might carry the product within the ad unit. So the ad unit will be dynamically generated based upon, based upon product SKUs. If you can do that sort of thing, nothing like it, because that gives you a huge amount of flexibility, and it gives, you, uh, it gives the affiliates the armories and um, the abilities to place any kind of ad in any kind of size of any kind of product on, on this site and do it in sort of a dynamic, real-time uh, fashion. So, in terms of finding affiliates, um, the, the seven, I've got kind of three sort of core ways of operating and, and doing this. Now, the very basic one is, is to advertise your program. So, as a very starting point, uh, put on your homepage of your site that you have an affiliate program. Um, it could be an ad unit somewhere to the side that just says an affiliate, get involved, get involved today. Use things like PPC or SEO or remarketing to actually sort of drive these things. So, there is search for people searching for affiliate programs. Um, make a web page on your site that talks about the affiliate program and has a sign up form going in and then do SEO around that. So if people look for your brand plus affiliate program, uh, they can find that page and they're getting in and, and getting involved. If you use remarketing, um, you could, um, if you're, and, and you, uh, you could do sort of uh, search-based activities around affiliates, bring them onto, onto affiliate pages and remarket to them and re, uh, retarget them with messaging saying, hey, why didn't you get involved with, with our program? Um, the other good way of doing it is, is starting conversations on actual affiliate message boards. These guys are people of the internet. Uh, they, will, they will be on message boards, they will be on forums, they talk to each other, they, ha they chat about affiliate programs, whether they're good or not, and they do this directly on, on forums themselves. So if you can get out there, get into the forums, start chatting to them directly, um, and or potentially do paid media buys on those on those forums, then you can potentially start promoting your actual uh, program directly to them through that. Um, the other way of doing it um, is kind of a, a bit of a, a direct approach, where you could just simply looking at content. So uh, one way you could do it is you could go to Google, do a blog search on Google, find blogs that are relevant to your business uh, and, and service, and see if those blogs are running affiliate ad units or ad sets. Now, AdSense are a very, is a very simple affiliate, easy thing to do. I just, I, I've got my content, I put AdSense against it, and Google starts paying me per click. Now, the CPC payouts on AdSense might not be that great in comparison to the payouts you might be able to give them through the direct sale that's generated. So if you, if you can hone down on sites who are running ad units like AdSense, 
um, and you just then start directly approaching them and, and then giving them sort of offers and saying, hey, look, if you run my ads, I'll give you this, I'll give you that, I'll give you these, uh, I'll give you this. You might find that these guys will start converting their AdSense units into your affiliate banners uh, and obviously then start generating generating new business. But that requires a direct sort of output, a direct outreach where, where you're, you're approaching them directly and, and getting on the phone or speaking somewhere and saying, hey, I've got an offer for you, do you want to, do you want to get on board? The final one, um, this is, this is a, kind of a, a bit more uh, of a, a cheeky way of doing it, um, is you, you, you use sort of sophisticated link analysis software to understand the competitor's uh, affiliate base. So if you know competitors have affiliate um, programs in place, you could use something like a Linkdex or a Comscore or a Majestic SEO to look at the downstream and upstream of traffic and look at the referral links coming into um, the, the websites that are of your competition. A Linkdex system, the Linkdex reports cost uh, around about $1,000 per report, but they're very good. They give, they give you a complete footprint of every single um, affiliate link coming into a site, where those affiliate links are coming from uh, and, and which, sites, which sites they are. And then you can do a direct approach to those affiliate sites that are affiliate, affiliating to your competitors and potentially do uh, direct conversations with them and say, okay, how much is he paying you? He's paying you 3%, I'll give you 3.1% and, and just snipe the affiliates away. Uh, if you, you've, got to, you've, got to, you've got to say that they're good for your competitors, then they're good for you as well. But this is, that also makes a bit of a doggy dog sort of, or doggy dog sort of world. Oh, um, sorry, I've got some of this. There's another one as well. Uh, this is basically you, you plug in um, a network uh, you, you let the network send traffic in, and then you use analytics and reverse IP tracking systems to understand the direct sources of the traffic. So you can then snipe effectively the network's traffic. So if the network has 100 affiliates and they're plugging into you, you might find, okay, of the 100 affiliates of that network, only two of the sites are actually driving the value. You then circumvent the network and actually go direct to source and speak to those two affiliate sites directly. If they're the network's own websites, then there's not a lot you can do. You'll just have to deal with that network. If they're outside of that network, potentially there's an opportunity to do a deal directly with them because you can offer them a better rate than what the network will be offering. So that's sort of some ways to market. Some of them are a bit sneaky and a bit backhanded, but that's the unfortunate world of the internet. Um, but uh, so. Once you've actually got the affiliates on board, we need to try and maintain a happy family uh, and, and try and uh, incentivize and keep them and get a kind of growing and a prosperous sort of thing. So what are some of the things you can do to kind of keep your affiliate uh, program and keep them, keep them happy, right? So, so don't just set up your pro program and forget about your affiliates. Like I said, they're cats and they're, you must cream. So what, what can we do to help that? So we need to talk to them as a definite. Need to give them email updates, give them offers, give them offer updates, give them specials. Keep giving promotions that, that, that they might buy into, bite on, and they, they keep running with. And potentially some of them will work well for them, and 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 they'll feel great value out of that. You're helping them to help make uh, to help make money. At the end of the day, if you can help them make more money, you make more money. So it's just the more you can do for them, the better. If you can do things like if you if you know you've got a decent base of affiliates in say Mumbai, you could potentially do meetups once a year, give them some booze and food, pay, maybe send them Christmas gifts, Diwali gifts, look after them, okay? Especially the big the big affiliates. If you find that one site is driving 80% of your affiliate program, that guy is so important to your affiliate program that you really need to wrap him up and make sure that you keep on top of him. Um, and get involved with the affiliate networks as well. So get get involved with the affiliate forums. Start talking to them. Start talking about what the market is doing, what the competitors are doing, and also maintain your reputation. I've seen many instances of brands uh, defaulting on payments, for example, um, and and because of that default on the payment, uh, they they don't they they then get a very bad name in the market, um, and then that that causes them a lot a lot of pain. Um, so referral programs, I talked about the multi-tiered side of things. Uh, if you do this, you, if you do multi-tiered based pro, uh, programs, you can get more affiliates, so you, you incentivize your affiliates to, to drive more affiliates in. Um, and and that, that again can grow the, the business. But this is the most important thing really, it's, it's just making sure you're paying your affiliates and being faithful to them, pay on time. That, that helps them reinvest the money, helps them to grow the, the, the pie. In terms of software solutions, um, there's many systems, a lot of pre-built systems will allow you to do the tracking, the payouts, the duplication, uh, the sign-up, the creative management, the reporting, email communications, and obviously they can be white labeled as well, so you can put your own front, front end on it. Um, I've created here a list of some of the top sort of systems that are out there. 
Uh, and there's also a very nice little link here which takes you to the uh, takes you to a comparison chart that compares all these different software solutions that are available. Um, I'm not going to go into deep depth on these guys, but essentially they'll they'll do these things for you, uh, as I just mentioned. Um, in terms of uh, the pricing models, the software might have a fixed monthly fee, they might have a one-off setup, uh, they might have a setup fee, they might have a percentage of payout, or they might have a combination of these sorts of things. So depending on the software, the service, and the system, you might dictate it. And some of these softwares are also parts of the networks, you also get the advantages of the affiliates as well coming in. Um, the final piece is sort of just the agency managed service, which is what we would do. And see, I'll just kind of walk you through our proposition as such. We will do a, a system where we can do a full affiliate management based program or we can do a lead generation based program uh, which feeds into a kind of pure CPA based affiliate network where I'm plugging in all the different networks, all the different uh, single affiliates and then you just get the CPA level that you want out the back end. Um, <clears throat> the core services will be the affiliate network auditing, consultancy, publisher recruitment and, and governance, strategy development and execution, uh, network uh, and, and negotiation with the network. So because we deal with a lot of networks, we can, we can, we can leverage and, and get buying power, uh, kind of leverage all our clients and get cheaper commercial deals. Uh, we also maintain uh, the sort of the brand and, and uh, make sure that none of the, uh, do the policing of the, of the program as well. Um, the affiliate models, we, 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 uh, we work basically all, all points along the way. So we look at the consumer, the publisher, and, and the amateurs as well, and how, how we go between all of that. Um, and obviously, <clears throat> for us, it's to, and we want to try and drive that incremental re uh, re revenue. We're, a key to our program will be developing the new partnerships, relationships, diversifying your traffic, increasing your ROI. Obviously, it's pure pay performance, and, and growing that exposure as well, doing the branding piece. Uh, the two sort of ways we can look at it would be sort of a private network, where it's private base, we um, we do the work behind the scenes and just generate the business, or we do something where it's a public network where everything everything's open uh, and and you see all the different data and everything like that, and and we work with you to manage that public data. So one, on one hand, we could just say right, what's the CPA, and then it's our lookout to try and get that CPA to you and get the volume. Or on the other hand, we work. Uh, Conjoined uh, in a conjoint fashion, where we, we go to all the different networks, all the affiliates, and all the partners, and, and we work what the best strategy is uh, directly. Um, we have a system called PHT, which underpins all our reporting. This system does duplication; it does real-time reporting. Uh, it's a system that is currently used by Apple globally, Dell globally, HP globally. Um, it is currently probably the number one affiliate system there is. Um, it can handle one million transactions. Sorry, one million transactions, one million requests a second. So, so the, the, the platform can take huge volumes of, of traffic, and it gives you real-time reporting. So you can look at it, and you can actually see the business come in and convert in real time. So the, the, the transactions are just there in front of you. You can see the payouts, who's driving a business, who's not driving a business, who's driving your traffic and not generating sales, and, and you get that in real time. It also manages the payouts at, at the back end as well. So that's a lot of talking. I've probably overstretched my talking, but um, I can now throw the board open, to, uh, throw it open to, to questions. Any questions? Great. So first of all, thanks Ben for a very very informative session. In fact, uh, you know most of the questions that have been put up are already been answered. So I've actually individually informed all of you uh, who whose question has been answered. So there are still some questions that are not not answered. I'm taking up all those questions now. Since the time is short, guys, simultaneously I'm putting up this poll in front of you and uh, you know I prospect communicate to services, they provide digital marketing services. So if you are a company and if you're interested in their services, you can just mention yes over here and then I'll forward the contact details to them. So uh, taking up the questions now, uh, so there is a question uh, from, so I'll, I'll, I'll go top down, okay? So um, uh, the question is regarding the lifetime cookie drop. The question from yeah. Prasad Pulkarni, he wants to know, for lifetime cookie drop, what happens when customers keep cleaning cookies in browser settings? So there's, there's two ways you can look at it. If it's a pure cookie model, then that affiliate is going to lose the, the sale uh, because the, the cookie's not there to, to maintain. Uh, but if, as, as a system, you can, um, if you have a CRM system which is able to log the, um, the initial referrer for that customer and your CRM system always has it that that affiliate drove that sale, 
then you can still run that lifetime thing. And, and that, from an affiliate perspective, is, is, is a wonderful scenario in that you as the brand are maintaining that that customer is associated with that affiliate. And whenever sales that customer brings in, uh, you're paying out to that affiliate. So you could go beyond the cookie, use your CRM to, de to then determine those payouts. But to be honest, it, it, those kinds of affiliate programs, they're, they're a little bit tenuous in that as an affiliate, I might deliver it once, but then if I just put my feet up and not do any more work, and then and other channels do all of the hard work to get that customer back in again, you keep paying out that, that affiliate and keep giving them the value, and they might not be the people that you should be paying out for those subsequent second, third, fourth sales that, that might come in. So it's one thing, but, but as, as an incentive for the affiliates, it's a fantastic sort of incentive because they, they can see the great value that you might be able to give them over a longer period of time. All right, great. Uh, okay, so I'm taking another question from Neha, and I'm simultaneously launching this another poll. Uh, you know, you know, as usual with your, we conduct six months formal course. So if you want to participate in it and also learn affiliate marketing as part of it, you can just mention yes over here. So question is from Neha, and uh, this is actually one of the common question I also heard that usually people start work when they're good in affiliate marketing, they're running it across multiple affiliate networks. So how to optimize your advertisements across multiple affiliate networks. So if you have some suggestions on that. So, uh, so uh, can I just, uh, I'm going to repeat that question back to you. You, you want right. to optimize your creatives across multiple affiliate networks? Yeah. Was that, was that the crux of the question? Yeah? Okay, yeah, so that's um, with creative, if, you, if, you've got, if you've got proper reporting in place, so for example, that PHG system I showed you just at the end, uh, that PhD system will give you in-depth uh, reporting on the creative units itself. So it will tell you which affiliates are selling, which creative units are driving those sales, uh, and you'll be able to do those comparisons uh, in terms of the creative units. If you've got a dynamic system which the creative unit, so in order for the creative unit to be pulled up, uh, a request has to come to the, 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 the server, uh, to the, 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 ad, the ad server, which is your, your affiliate platform, sorry, to get pull that creative. Uh, and, and then that creative is pulled into the affiliate's website. Um, what, what, with that sort of scenario, you can change the creatives on the fly through the affiliate management platform. So I, I know that the affiliates are running creative A, I change that creative on my platform, and that automatically updates all of the creatives on all the different affiliates who are running those creatives. So the, the, the affiliate themselves are just simply linking back into your, your creative server or such, uh, and using whatever creatives you've got. Now, if you have that scenario in place, you can do split tests and things like that where you've got A-B test your, your creatives where you, you, you launch a program, you then A-B test the creative and you might have say three creative and if you've got real time tracking and data coming back in off those creative, you'll be able to quickly see which creative units are actually driving the value. Um, likewise, if you want to get sort of a, a good steer on what creatives you should run with, I would very much advise looking towards the, the agency that manage your, your display or your PPC side of things and what, what is working for you on the GDN uh, and, and using those kind of creators as a starting point to kind of push in. But if you've got a good system in play, you can do, easily do sort of A-B testing on the creative. Got it. Great. So another question asked by Neha uh, is uh, there's an ad network called iCubes Wire and uh, somehow I'm not aware of them but she says that iCubes Wire does not reveal websites they plan to use for promotion. Is there any specific reason that you can think why they do that? So what, the, the, the network doesn't release data of their websites, was that, was that it? Yeah, reveals websites so, so where they plan. Some networks, for, some... So I'm assuming they're Sorry? not releasing, I'm assuming they're not really releasing the list of the affiliates who would be promoting. Uh, okay, yeah. Of, yeah. So, so some networks, some networks uh, might just come to you and say, I'm going to give you CPL, that's it. And then they mask, mask all the information coming in on the back end, right? Now, if you've got some good software, now the LinkDex system, as I showed you, that will be able to tell you exactly where the network's data, uh, visitors are coming from. If you run the LinkDex on, on the network, uh, you'll actually get all of the referring paths. So even if they don't tell you where they're coming from, you're able to get that information come in. Uh, you'll be able to see the links as they come in and start pointing into your site. So um, you can actually, so the network, it, it, the net, a lot of networks might make a blind, make it a blind network, and that's because they might do things um, outside of what they should be doing. 
So, for example, uh, they might be doing some sort of like some of the dark art based stuff where, let's say, um, I run a PPC campaign, uh, I brand bid on your brand, but I only run my PPC campaign at, say, the hours of 8 o'clock at night to 8 o'clock in the morning. So they're making the assumption that you're not going to check your PPC campaigns outside of the, during, the, obviously you're going to check them in the, in the day, but you might not check them outside of the day. Uh, and then they just, uh, they, 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 they'll, they'll switch them on, switch them off. So they'll come in and kind of snipe your brand traffic during those times, get sales, and then disappear again. Uh, now, if, you, if, you, if you've got good systems in play, you'll be able to work out exactly where that traffic's coming from and what they're doing, and you'll be able to, ha be able to see that kind of activity. Also, if they decide to do sort of uh, activities whereby, so there's lots, there's lots of dirty things affiliates might do. Um, it could be uh, uh, cookie bombing, for example. Now, have any of you ever been to a website and you click on something, and then all of a sudden, 20,000 pop-ups just open up in one go. 20,000 windows go ding, 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 ding. Each one of those is opening up uh, cookies, and uh, your 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 system is basically being bombarded with 20,000 affiliate cookies, so that whenever you go off and you, there's a high propensity that you might actually buy something, you're you're then kind of um, uh, coming into you've already got those cookies on your system, so that they they're just sniping the sales, even though they didn't actually sort of do a proper advertising transaction. So there's things you've got to be mindful of. So those sort of those sorts of activities, I, I could I could potentially send out an email, uh, which is a virus. That email uh, then emails to all of your friends and everything like that, uh, and then that when you click on the link, that does the cookie bomb. So not only do you have the cookie bomb, you've also got the email going out to out. So you then sort of uh, have a huge sort of spread of uh, drops of cookies across a massive base, uh, and then and then that that that's what we're driving in sales. Now that's these are some of the darker things that this might might play at, um, and some of the things that, that that potentially might happen. So so the masked network. I'm, I'm always wary of the networks because I want to know where the traffic's coming from. I want to know what sites. I was not to say that we don't operate with them. Uh, so as, as an advisor from an agent, we might use a masked network, but we would, we would absolutely monitor the quality of the traffic that comes in. And if we find that that traffic, that traffic source just does not convert, then that network will be, be thrown off. And in, and in some instances, we might argue with the network to say, I'm not paying you because um, standard, my standard click to conversion is 3% and yours is operating at 0.0001%. So, so that sort of scenario might happen. So that's where the agency um, can step in in that sort of way and, and, um, and, and help, help the brands, brands in that way. But um, yeah, I, I'm always wary of, of master networks, but there are ways around it and there's ways of getting to the data. All right, great. So uh, guys, a lot of you are asking questions that have already been answered in my opinion so we would be sending you the, uh, the the recording as well as the PDF over the email and you can go through it sometime later. I'm trying to combine some of the questions to optimize the time. The question asked by uh, Tony Sparkler, uh, he wants to know do Salesforce CRM and Microsoft Dynamics has some provision in this? So I mean overall there are a lot of questions regarding B2B scenarios. So, Considering uh, my sales are happening offline, are there ways to integrate the CRM tools with the affiliate network tools so that I can actually do the end-to-end -end tracking? Is there ways to do it? And is a Salesforce? Yes, there is. There is. So, so you need to understand um, it, it's going beyond the CRM system. So at your end as a brand, it, it's all dependent on a unique identifier. Um, so it might be that the affiliate system uses that unique identifier. You need to create provisions in your CRM system which will allow that unique identifier to pass through and into the CRM system. So when, so let's say the consumer comes in, they drop a lead. At that point, at that point when that lead is dropped, not only do you need to take his name, address, phone number, blah, 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 you need to take the source, the identifying source, uh, you need to take that unique identifier and you need to pass that into with with the name, address, telephone, blah, 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 into the system. So the CRM system is capturing that, and you're then able to report on that. You're then able to do things beyond just that. 
So you can, and it, making sure that your affiliate program, when it's linked in, that the affiliate program has a clear identifier to say this has come from that affiliate program. And ideally, you take it one step further, or even two steps further, to say, right, this uh, came from this affiliate program, this was the affiliate, and this was the source that drove it for that affiliate. So you've got those three identifiers passing through. But as a bare minimum, you need a single kind of key identifier that's going to pass into from one system to another. Now that might require uh, a software solution, that might require a, a, a person with good technical nous as to how to code that and how to, how to make that happen. Uh, but there, there's systems out there which allow for, for the easy kind of transition to the own system. But that would be dependent on who to build your CRM system how, and how you're currently passing information in and out of that. Great. And uh, then there are a lot of questions regarding working model. You know, a uh, lot of businesses actually think that, uh, you know, first let's get the conversion. Conversions are not optimized. They're not really ready for affiliate program. When they should really jump into affiliate network or should they do it on their own or, you know, put, get some agency involved. So, so overall, I so mean, what are your suggestions in terms of... So I think I've got what you're saying, so, so people might not have the end-to-end -end sale in play, right? So they're not able to see that loop. Now you can, um, a lot of the affiliate networks, uh, as the networks like say a Comly, a Netcore, a V Commission, these guys, they have pure CPL based models where you pay for the, for the lead. And then that's a very simple thing, right? Uh, you, can, you can just create a lead page, uh, they just send their traffic in, generate the leads and you pay back out off those leads. At the back end, you just want to make sure you know where your leads came from. So in your lead capture form, you say, right, this was vCommission, this was Comly, this was Netcore. And then um, based upon that, you can then start validating as to whether or not those leads are turning to business and whether they're any good or not. And obviously, if you're making sure that you're doing a sort of weekly sort of loop back or maybe in a long, monthly loop back in a very rudimentary fashion, you can use Excel or something like that, you'll be able to see whether or not this is working for you. And, and really, like all digital marketing activities, you need to just give it a go. It, you've got to see, it's a, it's a touchy-feely sort of thing. You've got to give it a go. If it works, great. If it doesn't, okay, don't spend too much money, just shut it off. And just kind of, just but make, be willing to make those little investments just to see if something works. Because if something does work, then that's something you can scale, that's something that's sustainable, and, and it will always drive you that business. So it's just, just good, you just got to keep giving it a go and, and, and not be, and not be kind of upset if it doesn't quite work for you. It's not, it's not the end of the world. It's not like a TV advert that if you get it wrong, you're going to lose your job sort of thing. It's just maybe like 50,000 rupees. Did it work? It did. Great. I'll give another 50,000 rupees. I'll, 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 I'll push more money into it. Uh, and so you can, be, you can be sort of use small numbers to start with and obviously scale very quickly if you can see that whole loop working for you. But keep something very simple. Keep it at a lead and then that's a very simple thing to operate with. Great. So, guys, actually, there are a lot and a lot of questions, and we have already exceeded eight minutes. And I'm going to take some of the questions. My request would be, if your question is not answered, uh, we'll do a blog post on this also. So, just post your question there, and I'll make sure that you get a reply. So, in an extension to you know the last conversation, uh, Tony uh, Sparkler, he has a comment. He said that I, I could not kind of see things in Salesforce. I've been working on this since quite some time. And uh, how about and how does affiliate marketing help me for ER for UK and Ireland, wherein local agencies like um, Ofsted and CQC monitor everything? So, so I, I, the connection wasn't that great on that, but I, I got the gist. That you want to do sales within UK, US with affiliate, right? Was that the scenario? UK and Ireland. I think the scenario is ERP sales for UK and Ireland, wherein the local agencies actually monitor everything. Um, so the, the, it, your voice broke up. So can, can you give just say that again? Okay. So the question is that. So there are two parts to the question. First is that since he's working in Salesforce quite some time, he hasn't seen any kind of feature in Salesforce for integrating affiliate programs. Probably there is some programming that is needed there, and the second part of the question yes, is okay. that. Yes. Okay. So, so to plug into Salesforce, you would definitely need. Um, you would have to work with Salesforce themselves to do an integration to allow that data to pass through. 
that yeah, you, 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 it's not a straightforward plug-in. It's a, it's a, you'd need to work with Salesforce to actually to actually do something like that. Um, if the lead capture form um, is, is integrated into Salesforce, then you just need to create another field uh, which will automatically just pull in whatever your identifier is into Salesforce. But sometimes you might need to do an actual direct implementation with Salesforce themselves. Got that. And uh, he wants a suggestion on affiliate marketing. Can he, affiliate marketing help him for ERP sales in UK and Ireland? Um, yes. So you could uh, in UK and Ireland. There's there's a, a lot of um, so so ERP. You, you, what, uh, what do you mean by ERP? You're saying in what sense? Sorry. Um, so if, we, so if you wanted to do uh, affiliate yeah. marketing, yeah. If you wanted yeah, to do affiliate marketing in, in the in Ireland, yeah. yeah. I think uh, as far as the CPL model that's there, and I'm sure uh, whatever ERP mo product, uh, Tony, if you can provide more description about it, that would be helpful to answer the question. Okay. So ERP um, for forensic and care care homes. That's what he has said. ERP for care forensic. homes and forensics. Okay, so so the the easiest way of doing something in the UK, uh, I would I would I would recommend going to one of the larger networks. So just go to say a trade doubler, a window, affiliate future, uh, a buy at, um, one of those guys. They have huge affiliate bases, and a lot of their affiliate bases crossed over. Um, and then just set up the program in the UK. Uh, an island, and and they'll they'll do all the work for. Uh, but the, the going into an affiliate program in the UK, you've got to be prepared to spend a, quite a lot of money. Um, like a, a basic program might cost you somewhere in the region of five to ten lakhs just to set the thing up, and then there'll be percentages of of uh, of sales paid out to the affiliate network as well. So you need to be prepared to invest quite a lot initially. To get the thing rolling, but then, then hopefully over a six-month period, you'll you'll return that uh, over time and and then build it out. But to to breach those markets, I wouldn't try uh, from here to try and and take on sort of the affiliate world in the UK. I would just plug into one of the predetermined sort of affiliate networks out there, uh, and and just use one of those guys and piggyback them to get the thing get the thing rolling. Um, it, you'll find it very difficult to try and manage it directly directly yourself. Um, and then getting getting hold of the affiliates because you'll you'll be competing in, on a lot of levels with a lot of people. Um, but my advice from that sense, would, if I was going to try and set, the, 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 go to one of the networks, put your offer out there, and see 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 what comes back. Great. I think uh, we've already exceeded 13 minutes. So uh, in the interest of time, uh, I really want to thank all of you. I really want to thank Ben for a very very interesting and engaging session. I can still see there are some of your questions just still not answered. I will actually forward all these questions to Ben and uh, I will probably get uh, answers to some of them on the blog post also. So if I, uh, if I can just add, thank you everybody. I've got, a, yeah. I've got a Twitter handle here so if they want to tweet a question to me I'll, I'll answer them there as well. Yeah? Got it. Great, great. I think that's an easy option. So everybody, uh, you think you have any follow-up question on this session, you can just uh, start following Ben and now, uh, uh, I mean, tweet with uh, the Ben Twitter handle and then you'll get a reply to that. So thanks a lot. Thank you, Ben. Very, very interesting session. And uh, thanks, everyone, for your participation. The session is closed. Great. Thank you.